four full days, for that stink bait to stew in the heat. In this episode, we start off with a corrupt superintendent who almost kills his boss with a prank that went wrong. Which resulted in a stinky nuclear revenge prank, adding more smell to the fire. Followed by a resentful manager that wrongfully accused an employee for his mistake, making him lose his job. This true revenge story consists out of two distinct acts of revenge, combining in spectacular fashion to create nuclear revenge. Lastly, an IT employee gets cheated out of his salary, but karma gifts him his boss's Achilles heel through a hard drive. If you like this kind of content about true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. When you see the like button pull a legendary Pokemon card, be sure to get revenge, by telling it that its shiny Pokemon card is worthless. Then trade your unwanted energy card for his valuable shiny one. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. I have been enjoying other people's revenge stories and they just brought back all kinds of memories, so I thought I would share mine. Most do not only have devastating effects, but sometimes questionable means were used, my story fits that perfectly, and since this was nearly 30 years ago, I guess the statutes of limitations are well up, so I can safely tell it. So, anyway, it is the early 90s, and I was in my 20s, working as an electrician with my best friend. We were known as a duo team within our crew, and we kept everyone on the job site laughing and in good spirits, even in the worst of times. We were working new construction of an elementary school and had been on site since the very beginning. We were two weeks away from punch out. That is where construction is complete and inspections are done looking for any flaws or corrections that need to be made. The superintendent over the whole construction site was a major jack hole, and had been since day one. He was new and wanting to make a name for himself. It was his first time running a job and he made several mistakes, but he always blamed others. Remember me mentioning worst of times? He constantly cut corners to save on cost, which would turn around and bite him later on. He had gotten several good hands fired. He would run good contractors off of the job and bring in his friends to replace them. The drywallers and painters were a couple of examples, and I had heard that he had half of the plumbers run off and replaced with his crew as well. He was a total jackhole to us electricians as well, wanting us to work overtime, but not willing to pay for it. He was really wanting to keep us behind, so that he could charge the company fines. Our small company finally brought in a couple of extra hands which pissed him off even more, because we were starting to catch up. By the time Christmas rolled around, we were ahead of everyone else, and as mentioned, the job was nearing punch-out status. My best friend and I were also roommates, so I carpooled with him as I didn't have my own transportation. Two weeks before Christmas, my friend's car lost its rear end and both missed two days of work repairing it. The Jack Hole superintendent saw this as an opportunity and told our job foreman to have us fired, if not run us off the job site. He tried to kick us off the property himself, but since he had no legal means, he tried to have our job foreman run us off, citing we were unsafe and a distracting others from getting any work done. His argument was dismissed since, as I mentioned, we were ahead of everyone else. It was the day before Christmas Eve, our last day before we would be off for the holiday. Everybody knew our supervisor, who was visiting that day, was deathly afraid of snakes. Earlier that day, a small rattlesnake had been found hibernating beneath a port of John that had been moved and killed, gotta love Texas. The Jack Hole superintendent had brought a cooler full of beer for his crew for when the day ended. Well, our supervisor made his rounds, inspecting our work, and talking to our foreman, and since we were his last stop, was ready to leave and start his holiday. The superintendent told him to have a beer and pointed out the cooler. Our supervisor opened the lid to the cooler and had a heart attack, because of the shock when he saw the dead snake inside. When the EMTs finally cleared him, the supervisor was telling him that he saw me and my friend at the cooler earlier that day and blamed us. Of course, we had been under the foreman's nose all day, in which half of it was with the supervisor, and our supervisor was aware to the jackhole's tricks, so he did not give in to the demands of us being fired. This is where we started plotting our revenge. 
My friend and I did not take kindly to our supervisor being harmed, nor to the blame being pinned on us. Do to us what you will, but do not harm those in whom we have respect. Like I said, it was the last day of work before the Christmas holiday. We had Christmas Eve and Christmas off. After work, my friend and I drove to a bait shop and picked up a gallon of catfish Charlie. For those who don't know, catfish are attracted to really foul odors, and catfish Charlie was one of the worst smell baits used for fishing for catfish. I mean, one whiff will turn your stomach and you will turn green. A cast iron stomach is what you need to prevent you from losing your lunch. We drove back to the school and around back to where the air handler unit was. For those who don't know, the air handler is the main environmental unit of commercial buildings. We opened up the main intake duct and dumped the whole bucket of the catfish Charlie and closed the duct back up. For good measure, we had also added about a pint and a half of water and stirred into a nice thinner paste so that it would not quickly dry out. I did learn that, even though long time smokers, I could hold my breath a full minute and a half, and my friend two minutes, probably due to him being ex-military. Neither of us could see for about 10 minutes due to the tears, and it was a miracle we didn't lose the contents of our stomachs. Even in Texas, winters can get cold, including on the coast, and this was a particularly cold winter. It even snowed on Christmas but not enough to write home about, which maybe happens once every 10 to 15 years. Remember, this was Wednesday, and like I said, we had Christmas Eve and Christmas off plus the weekend added. Four full days, for that stink bait to stew in the running heating system. Come to find out later, the jackhole superintendent and his cronies had forgotten to lower the main thermostat before leaving for the long winter holiday weekend. The thermostat is normally lowered to 50 Fahrenheit when closed during cold weather, and raised to 82 Fahrenheit when closed during warmer. Yeah, it was left at 75 Fahrenheit that whole weekend. It's Monday, and my friend and I pulled up to quite the scene that morning. Martians on all fours seemed to be littering the grounds of the school, projectile vomiting spewed everywhere. There was an ambulance, and three fire trucks on the scene with firemen in full rubbers, including respirators, running around everywhere. All of the doors and the windows of the school were open with giant fans venting the buildings. The air was putrid, and we turned green upon exiting the vehicle. Oh, holy F, was all I could say, what the hell happened here? Our boss was sitting on the hood of his car next to ours, his breakfast artfully painted the ground. The jackhole superintendent and a couple of his guys were in the back of the ambulance on oxygen, as they had taken the full brunt upon opening the building. Okay, let's tally the damage. The smell had permeated everything, and I mean everything. The school, besides cafeteria, was fully carpeted, the drop ceilings were of the fiberglass type, as well as the insulation, so they absorbed the smell. The walls that weren't cinder block were papered and not painted. Since the inner duct work was the insulated type on the inside, all of that had to be replaced as well. Needless to say, tens of millions of dollars in damage. Also, a fence had to be erected to prevent such a thing from ever occurring again. Come to find out, the superintendent had skimped on the insurance and pocketed the money, so needless to say, it fell to his company to cover all of the costs. All of his underhanded dealings came to light in the end as well. Needless to say, he lost his job and was arrested, losing his contractor's license, forever. Our boss never said anything, but I am thinking, due to the way he always grinned at us after that day, that he had his suspicions that it was us. But, he never turned us in and even put in for us a big raise. Since the smell didn't permeate any of our stuff, and our jobs were complete anyway, the plumbers, electricians, and pipe fitters were spared from ever having to enter that mess. I want to admit that I do feel ashamed for doing it. Being young and dumb and all is a great excuse, but a good contractor service went bankrupt and a lot of jobs were lost in the end. My brother said that five years after the incident, after many complaints, it was torn down and rebuilt. Last side notes, the EMTs did stabilize my supervisor. He refused to go to the hospital wanting to be home for Christmas. Since the EMTs could not force him, when they got his vitals stabilized, they left. A week later, an EKG did confirm the heart attack. 
he was admitted to the hospital for double bypass surgery. As far as how the snake got put in the cooler, we believe it was the superintendent, but nobody ever had any proof. Here is a case of two distinct acts of revenge, combining in spectacular fashion to create nuclear revenge. About 20 years ago, I was a sales engineer supporting sales representatives at STC, short for Snowflake Tech Company. A new sales manager joins the team, he was a former co-worker from a prior job, a petty little man. Prior to this we were peers, now he was a manager over the sales reps I supported. I had a separate chain of command, he was not my manager, but felt he should be. He was resentful of the power that sales engineers in this new company had. In an attempt to outperform me, he closed a very large deal with a banking company, and did so without any involvement from the sales engineers, just one sales rep. He gloats about it publicly, talks about how we don't even need sales engineers, the whole nine yards. Later, the manager calls me in a panic, and we engage in resolving the issue with the customer. The sales rep and the sales manager totally twisted things up, and sold the customer an incompatible set of solutions. I tried to repair the damages by suggesting a swap of products to make the whole sale compatible for use. This wouldn't mean a big price difference for the client. So nobody would lose money. But the sales manager doesn't want to do it, because admitting he fricked up would make him look bad. And he whines at me for bringing up the price, because that's supposed to be the rep's job. He calls my boss and craps all over me. My boss took his side, and gets all over me too, it went so far that I chose to quit the job right then and there. I sent a very lengthy, detailed letter to HR explaining how the sales rep messed up, lied to the customer, and how the sales manager and my boss tried to make me the scapegoat instead of trying to fix it. My perspective and suggestion would have been easier and made everyone happy. Except for their egos. I move on. Get a new job, do other things. At some point, I'm chatting with an old friend from STC, and he mentions they messed up a huge deal that they spent a year on. I'm still bitter about the douche sales manager and my ignorant boss, so I post about it on a forum a bunch of investors use. The stock crashed $13 the next day. This will be important later. I find out the bank company is suing STC for messing up the deal. The deal that the sales manager messed up, and tried to pin on me. I reach out to the banking company, send them a copy of the letter I sent to HR, in which I detailed precisely how badly SDC fricked them over. I talk with one of their lawyers and he's very happy, especially the part in my letter where I describe how the sales rep lied to ABC. SDC subpoenas me for a deposition. I have to tell SDC's lawyers everything that I told the bank lawyers. Lots of lawyer stuff I won't get into now. The day before the deposition, STC sues me directly. Remember STC's stock crashing? They're suing me for bad-mouthing the company and attempting to short their stock. Which was not my intention. However, there's a twist, because STC is suing me directly, I don't have to say doo-doo to them at the deposition. Their preparation for the lawsuit goes completely out the window. They know they're fricked, because of the letter I sent HR, but they don't know how bad, because they don't know what else I know or what I've told the bank lawyers. Additionally, because they never deposed me, they can't catch me contradicting myself between what I say at the deposition and at trial. They're dumbfounded. No idea how they could have messed this up this badly. Turns out there were two legal teams, one defending against the bank's lawsuit, and another trying to scare people away from talking crap about the company on the internet, by indiscriminately suing their critics. They didn't communicate with each other, and the one team didn't mention to the other team, that they would be suing a key witness in their case. STC settles the lawsuit with ABC, and they drop the lawsuit against me. They fired the sales rep, the sale rep manager, and his manager too. I had been working at a computer repair shop on a commission-based system. We would get PCs in and the tax would not get paid until the repair work was paid for. If the client did not pay for the work performed within a given time frame, the shop would take possession and resell the equipment. It was not uncommon for the techs to be cheated out of the work they had done. To make this job sound even more appealing, 
the shop owner would have the tech employees fix PCs from his friends and family, but this was unpaid work. I was looking forward to a pretty big check due to just cranking out the repairs, but I found out that these were all friends of the owner so I worked for free those two weeks. One of the things that we do, we pull the hard drives and create a complete image of the whole drive for archival protection to be wiped after the job is done. Turns out that the owner of the computer shop and his wife were part of the swingers community. They were hosting a small but local swingers site, they used a specific laptop for all the activities concerning these private parties. I seized the hard drive and told the owner that he needed to pay me for the work I had done. The owner fired me on the spot. In that moment, I just grabbed my tools and walked out the door without realizing I still had the hard drive in my hand. In the small town, the owner had built the company to be a good Christian business, and the owner portrayed himself as a pillar of the community. The only Christian fault they saw was that he was in a divorce with his ex-wife. I took the information off the drive and I was able to get access to his passwords, plus to many pictures and videos used for their swingers website. Waiting on my three weeks for the last check, I decided that I would go scorched earth instead of looking for a payout. First I focused on his business. I had some time to look over the labor laws and found out he violated quite a few of them while I was working for him. We were treated as contractors, but he took out taxes and SSI, which he never paid for and got to keep more for himself. The other thing, we were required to clock in like hourly employees, but were paid on commission, so due to the pay structure, many employees were getting well under minimum wage for some weeks. I also put my focus on his reputation. I was actually able to get access to their website through their login information. So I decided to do a few interesting things with the company website and their swingers website. I put a link at the bottom of the company webpage, where I directed people to the swingers site they ran. I also changed the password authentication to allow everyone into the paid areas of the site. I also took down some of the pixelated pictures of him and his current wife and posted the original pics I took from the drive. It took them about a week to find out about all of this. I also sent out a mass email to everyone on the owner's email list to check out the swingers site. After everything. I finished the job by sending ex-wife the drive, to help her in her court battle. In the end, all long-standing contracts were terminated by his clients in droves. The labor board did an investigation and fined him for his rule breaking. The IRS did an audit where they found further evidence of him doing creative accounting. In the end, he lost his business, his kids, his reputation, and even his current wife, all because he thought he was too much of a big shot to not pay his IT help. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation.